Hey guys and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetrabit Gaming, the series where I explore interesting scrapped, secret, and unseen content in video games. This is part 2 of my Mario Kart Double Dash series, so if you haven't yet seen part 1, I highly recommend you check it out first by clicking on the card right here to see all the cut content as well as the unseen aspects of the game's Mushroom Cup. If you are coming here from part 1, just like the end of the last video, I will be using the free camera to look around the rest of the courses in the game and see what interesting things I can find or take a closer look at. And really quickly before we begin, if you guys do enjoy this video and would like to support the channel and see more Lost Bits in the future, don't forget to slap a like down below and let me know what other games you'd like me to explore next. And with all of that said, let's continue exploring Mario Kart Double Dash. Alright, kicking off the Flower Cup, we start with Mario Circuit. Just like with the Chain Chomp from the last video, a few of you guys wanted to see what these piranhas look like up close. And just like last time, the result is pretty creepy. And just in case you're curious what the inside of a Goomba looks like, here you go. Going inside Peach's Castle at the center of the course, we can also see that the castle is in fact one large swimming pool. Nice. This same castle also makes an appearance in the next course, Mushroom Bridge, as another easter egg in the distance, but this time with much less detail and polygons. But the weirdest thing in the Mushroom Bridge course is actually underneath the light posts. There we can see what looks to be a texture set for various things in the map, ranging from the warp pipes to signs to the windows on the mushroom houses. No idea why this would be here, honestly. Hello. It is the year 20XX. Daisy's narcissism has reached peak levels. We are now aboard the Daisy Cruiser, which sports the latest in hovering safety raft and automatic moving table technology. Oh, and remember all the eyes from the previous episode? Well, here we start again with the signs and pylons in this level having eyes for whatever reason. Next up is one of my favorite courses in the game, Waluigi Stadium. Wah. Here we can take a closer look at the crowd which consists of Sniffits, Shy Guys, Boos, Toadsworths, and Donkey Kong Juniors. I guess after DK Jr. was cut, he cloned himself and decided to come back and watch the races. For those of you that saw the Mario Kart 64 Lost Bits video, you might remember the TV thingy from Luigi's Raceway which replicated what the main camera saw. Well I'm pleased to announce that the giant Waluigi TV in this course does the same, but better and more trippier than ever. It's actually kind of... aesthetic. I don't like where this is going. Stop! 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 Mushroom City is by no means my favorite track to race on, but in my opinion it is definitely one of the best looking maps in this game. There isn't all too much out of the ordinary in this map, but it was really cool to just explore around the map. Also in the background in the distance, I'm pretty sure we're able to see the suspension bridge that we can race on in the course Mushroom Bridge. And next up is Yoshi Circuit, which if you haven't guessed already from the name and the minimap, it is in the shape of a giant Yoshi. And it's really cool to be able to appreciate the representation from a distance. And again in the distance we can see Daisy's Cruiser. I wonder if the whole cruise voyage it takes is just visiting all these different tracks. Another iconic part of this map is the Yoshi helicopter that flies around, but unfortunately you guessed that the inside of it is empty as well. Huh. That's a pretty angry looking nothing. Oh wait, just kidding, that's a pretty angry looking volcano. I mean, I wouldn't be super happy to be filled with molten lava, or to be missing my entire backside either. Here comes the sun. Another kind of cool thing about this map are the tiny little other volcanoes that we can see off in the distance, which unlike the big angry volcano are completely modeled and textured. And that's probably why they aren't as angry. Starting off the special cup is Wario Coliseum, which is another one of my favorites from this game. Here we can zoom out and have a nice view of the entire chorus and the cool sphere cage in the middle. We can also take the camera outside to see the searchlights and kind of how they work. It looks like they basically just project two slightly different color cylinders, instead of providing any actual lighting effects. I don't know if this is ever visible during a race, but off in the distance outside the Coliseum we can again see what I think is the previous chorus, Mushroom City. I always mix up Dino Dino Jungle with DK Mountain, and it looks like for good reason as this course appears to be mere kilometers away from the same angry DK Mountain from before, although this time it has no face off in the distance. One of the first things you might notice when starting this map is the pterodactyl that flies near you at the start of the race. What's interesting is that before the race actually starts, you can see the pterodactyl hovering motionless towards you off screen, and it's only until he's visible that he actually begins to flap his wings. 
Now this level wouldn't be called the Dino Dino Jungle without the dinosaurs in this level, so let's take a look at the others. Firstly, there's the big memorable blue one, which again, some of you wanted to see inside, so here you go. There's also the two red and orange dinosaurs which hang out in the water area, and if we take the camera below the waterline, we can see that they are in fact not modeled underneath the water. And next is the token Bowser Mario Kart chorus, Bowser's Castle, which apart from some angry arrow signs doesn't really have anything too much out of the ordinary. This course for sure has one of the coolest skyboxes though, and from a closer look we can really appreciate it even more. There's also the Bowser statue at the end of the course which spits out fireballs, and we can move inside of it to see how the fireballs just kind of appear. As always in Mario Kart, for the last race course we have none other than Rainbow Road. Visually, this course was a huge improvement from the last Rainbow Road on the Nintendo 64. Instead of just a basic empty black void like in the previous game, this Rainbow Road has an aesthetic skybox as well as a modeled and textured city below the course, which I can only assume is again Mushroom City. One of the most interesting things we can find in this course is actually not in the course at all. By moving the camera outside of the box, we can find a heart model. Now there are various theories as to why this is still here. The question still stands however as to why it's still outside of the box and not simply just deleted by the developers. Also, apparently the heart sometimes has a red shell texture, but whenever I load it, it just appears the same color as the other floating items in the course. Next I wanted to check inside the blue spiny shell and see if the spike effect was created the same way the spikes were made in the pokies in Dry Dry Desert. It looks like this time the developers took a different approach by having the spikes just modeled on the outside of the shell instead. Alright and lastly let's move on to the battle courses of this game and start with Cookie Land. This map is really basic and small so there's not all too much to talk about so let's have a quick glide around the course. There appeared to be a trend in the early mid 2000s Mario Kart games where there would be a battle map based on the console of the game as seen in the DS level in Mario Kart DS as well as the Nintendo GameCube level in this game. The level is pretty self explanatory, everyone just kind of dukes it out on the top of a GameCube. Although this level is really basic, we can still have a look around the GameCube and surprisingly enough, although pretty much never seen, the sides of the GameCube are modeled pretty well, including the controller and memory card ports, the ventilation grill on the side, and yes, even the carry handle. Gotta love that goofy thing. Next up is what I like to call Block Fort Light, as Block City is basically Block Fort, without all the good parts. Again, basic map, not too much to see. <sighs> Pipe Plaza is probably my second favorite Mario Kart battle course of all time. Here we can take a closer look outside of the course at the little mushroom houses and the warp pipes. And if we look behind the warp pipes in this course, we can see that some of the bricks aren't textured from the backside. And there's also these weird black cones on the pipes, which I assume were made to create the shadow effect scene from the other side. For those of you that have played Luigi's Mansion, you'll notice that the Luigi's Mansion Battle Course, which just got a spiffy remake in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, pays a nice little homage to the original game. Here we can have a closer look at the portrait ghosts, which appear namely Bulosis, Madame Clairvoya, Chauncey, and Mr. Lugs. There's also a portrait of Bowser, which in Luigi's Mansion also contained King Boo but for some reason he has cropped out in the Mario Kart portrait. And as always we can have a nice look at the course from afar. And for the last stop of this video we have the Tilt-A-Cart Battle Stage. This is another pretty basic flat stage, but as the name implies, in this stage, every so often the platform will tilt causing the item boxes and players to roll. Not all too much to say about this stage, except again, the stage appears untextured from the bottom, so from beneath it sort of looks like everything is just floating. And with that concludes this Lost Bit series on Mario Kart Double Dash. I hope you guys enjoyed exploring this game and its maps as much as I did. And again, if you did enjoy the video, leave a like down below and let me know what your favorite course was to see. And if you would like to see exclusive stuff and stay even more up to date with me and my channel, consider following me on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram as well. Links to all of those will be in the description below and I hope to see you guys there. And if you're not tired of Mario Kart yet, I recently did a collaboration with Nathan Wooten over at his channel where we duke it out in races and battles in Mario Kart 8, so be sure to check it out by clicking on the link in the end card as well. And as always guys, thank you all so much for watching, especially if you've made it through both videos in this series, and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit.